Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. The markets are not opening anywhere near their 11,171 mark. They're just up about six, seven points. Well, we're still looking at 12,000. That's been our long-standing target, and that's where we think this uh, trend can extend to. The NCLT has a large CCI 6,000 crore penalty on cement companies itself. The mid-cap index, which had initially given up its optimism or its gains that we saw, but we're seeing some amount of buy on dips, which is coming in for the mid-cap index at this point in time. Revenue is coming at 5,935 crore, 100 crore short of expectation, but the profit at 155 crore is a beat compared to our expectations. Just about near that 11,150 uh, odd mark and less than 20 points now away from the top. It's been a day where the market has just consolidated the gains that it's seen over the last many days. Flirting with all-time highs, not quite there just yet, but um, the advanced decline ratio was good, so there was quite a bit of traction there. So near and yet so far, Nifty fails to hit fresh highs and falls short by 20-odd points. But the Sensex hits record high for the sixth time in the last few sessions, even as mid-caps succumb to some profit-taking. Setback for cement companies, the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal upholds the Competition Commission's 6,300 crore rupee penalty over cartelization. Cement companies are going to challenge the order in the Supreme Court. Symphony and Hexaware get battered in trade after reporting uh, disappointing first quarter earnings. Symphony slumps more than 18%, while Hexaware was down almost 8%. The NTPC stock tumbles 4% in trade. This after reports indicate that the government may sell its stake worth $2.5 billion in NHPC to NTPC. An infra-major LNT posts a steady first quarter top line beat street estimates. Order inflows rise 37%, but the infrastructure business margins remain under pressure. JSW Steel sees some profit booking after first quarter earnings beat expectation on almost all parameters. Well, those were the top five headlines from Daral Street in what was a nail-biting trading for six hours. Hello and welcome to Markets Today Talk Pack, the show where we tell you all about the six hours of trading in only five headlines. I'm Lata Venkatesh. With me, my colleague Prashant Nair. Uh, hi, Lata. Uh, thanks for that. I think it was nail-biting because, I mean, I think we were all uh, fixated on uh, whether we will actually uh, end up uh, sort of... Uh, uh, taking out that 11,171 mark, which was the all-time high, the live high, I mean, for no other good reason but, I mean, just to get over with it. <laughs> we will talk about that. We will talk about other things. We will talk about the uh, stories which dominated today's uh, uh, market action. Our guests will answer your questions. Uh, Prakash Devan is here in our studios. Ashwini Gujral on the charts. Gentlemen, thanks very much, both of you, for being with us here on the show. Before we start the Q&A session, let's quickly uh, wrap out how the day's trade began and how we ended and what really happened. Nada. Well, first up, as you said, uh, the index actually dithered at uh, uh, record levels. Uh, the usual nervousness of a champion uh, when a big match happens, it seemed to be like that. Uh, the global environment was kind of positive to mixed. Uh, it started off reasonably well, although the yuan had devalued. We had the overnight uh, uh, positive vibes of China agreeing to do a huge fiscal stimulus, probably to beat the trade blues. Uh, but it, it was not all green on Asia, neither was it in Europe, but it was not all red either. So very mixed cues, but the negative cue was that crude was higher, higher by over a dollar, so over $74 on crude. That was the global setup, but we were moving on our own steam with the bulls taking the nifty and the mid caps higher for three consecutive days. That clearly got stopped uh, as we reached uh, these all-time uh, high levels. Uh, you saw profit-taking even where results were good, like in Asian paints. And you saw profit-taking where results were disappointing, like in Symphony, big disappointment, heads away, minor disappointment. But all told, people were only waiting to take off money today. So let's see where we go from here. Is it sideways? Is it a selling before you make the next dash? We'll have to ask our experts that. But stock-wise, any more details? I mean, so uh, starting with pockets where there was weakness, Lada. So real estate, pharmaceuticals, and IT <coughs> actually stood out. In terms of uh, pockets which actually did well, there was PSU banks and little else. I mean, the PSU bank index ended about 1% higher, but that's about it. Uh, so large cap stocks which did quite okay. State Bank of India, there was Bosch, there was Tata Steel. 
Uh, on the lower side, NTPC, part of our headlines, Lupin, something like an HCL tech was lower in trade as well. Uh, broader, stock, broader market uh, and mid-cap, small caps, everything which did well, Naveen, Florine, I'm only mentioning those uh, large movers which had volumes, VIP, uh, look at MCX, look at Tata LXI, uh, Terumalai Chemicals, Everest Industries, some of these of course on the back of earnings like Everest. Uh, we had uh, Nokri which is InfoEdge, Shakti Pumps was up 5%, uh, Future Consumer was up about 5-6% as well. Under pressure, Hexaware, I mean it's been one of the biggest movers along with names like NIIT Tech etc of 2018 uh, and uh, it sold off big time. PC Jewelers, uh, was lower big time. Sun TV was down about 3-4%. BEL by close, that OFS, where is the interest one could ask? But BEL was down about 5% by close. Symphony was lower big time. And there was Tata Global, which ended uh, in sharply lower as well. Tata. Okay, now let me ask uh, our guests where we go from here. Ashwini, uh, you actually called it right. You said in the morning that uh, this may not be a day of uh, breaking records. But uh, how would you describe uh, the uh, markets in general and the Nifty in particular? Uh, does it still retain a bullish edge? Well, the issue is that we are at almost previous highs and we are getting these narrow ranges. Yesterday was a 50 point range, today is a 50 point range. That just shows that at higher levels there is no momentum and uh, you can't think of a large stock that is moving up 4-5% which is helping the indices break through these levels. You have half, 1%, 2% type moves that often does not uh, you know, make re resistances break down. So if this continues, you know, slowly the momentum will start coming off and we may go below 11,000. So now the trade is that 11,000, 11,050. If we start coming uh, down below 11,000, maybe a short trade would start to open up. Okay, uh, so already, uh, I mean, momentum fading, maybe uh, things open up on the downside. We'll see. Well, to the second headline now, the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal, the NCLAT, has delivered a massive blow to 10 cement companies today. The NCLAT dismissed cement companies' plea that had challenged the Competition Commission's order to impose a fine of 6,300 uh, 6, rupees on them for allegedly creating a cartel. Uh, Ultratech Cements, uh, ACC and Ambuja all ended in the red. Ashmit has been tracking this story and it's a story which has been going on since 2010. Uh, Ashmit, what implications could the order have on these uh, cement companies now? Where does this go? That's a big setback coming in for uh, cement companies. There's no denying that this is the biggest ever penalty that has been imposed by the competition watchdog in its entire history of 6,300 crores spread across 11 cement companies. All the big names uh, will bear a brunt as far as this penalty is concerned. But let's keep in mind as far as the implications are concerned. First up, the first implication, of course, is that the charge that the CCI had put across is that artificially the prices had been hiked up by curtailing of production by these players acting in concert. Now, if that has been upheld by the NCLAT, and if that is true, then perhaps is there a case that has now been made out for real estate companies to seek damages and what would be the quantum of those damages one estimates uh, for hundreds of crores if not thousands so that's an implication to watch out for another one of course here has been the quantum of the penalty itself as of right now the penalty that has been slapped has been 50 percent of the annual profits for the financial year 2010 now uh, exercise of discretion has been a subject matter of huge amount of debate should this penalty be 20 percent should it be 80 percent how that discretion needs to be exercised is awaiting clarity by way of the nclat order and third implication, of course, is for companies such as Banani. Mind you, they're already facing resolution proceedings. What impact will such a penalty have on the resolution process? Will the CCI penalty perhaps take precedence over the dues that have been claimed by lenders? How will it uh, work as far as the resolution process is concerned? So clearly, uh, various questions, various implications. But as of right now, let's keep in mind that other, other than the fact that it is a setback, this has been an order uh, that has been passed by the appellate tribunal. Uh, we've spoken to cement company councils. They've confirmed that this order will be challenge before the apex court back to you for the moment i think it just goes to the apex court uh, but prakash uh, cement stocks have been in the news they have been in the money so we have a question from a viewer uh, uh, the viewer is vivek singhania and he has tweeted to us that he has 2000 shares of india cements at purchased at a price of 193 rupees should he add uh, or should he sell i think uh, 
cement is is you know as a pocket let's analyze what's happened what uh, we could attribute this uh, sharp move to uh, you know last couple of days so uh, after ultra tech numbers there's a very clear expectation that costs are going to be higher in this quarter gone by and this could probably go on and, and before the demand side starts you know taking up and uh, when ACC reported the numbers, things looked very different. And suddenly, you, you know, there was this whole mood to buy into cement again. Though this is not the best of seasons for cement uh, in terms of sales growth. But there was this expectation that cement could revive itself. We're getting into election year. There's going to be a lot of spending related to housing, infra growth and all. So I think it's a great pocket and, and not yet overdone. Uh, so he should continue. If he has the gumption to buy into, uh, let's say, some other company, he could probably... And I keep on saying... Uh, focus on the smaller ones. India Cement, of course, has a great geography to back it with. And it's only the southern region, uh, where we've seen price hikes, we've seen demand pick up, whereas the west and the north haven't really revved up yet. But I keep on saying, you know, diversify according to the geographical spread of the cement company rather than just cement companies by itself. So, you know, you could add maybe a little bit of quantity of a smallish company called Star Cements, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which is focused onto the eastern markets, and maybe add some more uh, uh, onto India Cements as well, because he's bought it at significantly higher levels. Yeah. So his averaging would probably, you know, make it easier. But give it at least six to nine months. Don't don't expect miracles just in the result season and then things would start turning around. Yeah. Bought 193, today 97. Yeah, I think uh, Ashwini, uh, uh, cement stocks uh, started a rally earlier this week. That got sold into today. So you think it's a time to buy the dip? All this was known piece of news that they had a case going, etc. Basically, the positioning tells you that the cement cycle has bottomed out and uh, you should have further high is coming in on all cement stocks, so this dip should be bought. Okay, we move on to the next uh, headline, the third. A symphony in Hexaware it ended with pretty sharp losses in trade today. Hexaware was down 8%, while Symphony plunged over 18%. Symphony's profits declined nearly 49%, and revenues fell 23%. Margins stood at 15% compared to 24% in the same quarter last year. Meanwhile, Hexaware reported a mixed set of numbers in the first quarter, but the stock got punished nonetheless. Net profits grew over 14%, revenues rose 8%, but the stock saw a sharp sell-off as margins missed the mark. Here is the CEO of Hexaware, R. Sri Krishna, talking about the numbers. In terms of future, we have provided a guidance that our EPS will grow by uh, 13 to 14% for this year in dollar terms and higher in INR terms. Uh, but from an EBITDA uh, perspective or operating performance, we expect it to grow in line with revenues. Our forex gains for the rest of the year will be uh, materially lower. Uh, we, we had solid forex gains um, during this quarter and also the previous quarter. Uh, that will actually reduce substantially going forward. Okay, it's time for a viewer query. Amol Rahate has written to us from Jalna. He has a question on Hexaware. He's been holding 139 shares at 145 rupees a piece. And uh, he's been holding it for two and a half years. Wants to know if he should hold or sell. 139 shares at 145 rupees. Prakash? Wow, so, you know, he's, he's got a great cushion for himself, but... Uh, you know, does the... Almost uh, got it at the trough, no? Yeah, possibly. And, and, and you know, uh, the question for such investors is tricky because, you know, you really don't want to miss out on the uh, meat on the bone and, and, you know, we left sitting when the thing starts reversing. But if you look at the earnings today, mm. uh, and, and this happened to Hexaway's last quarter earnings as well. You know, the day of the earnings, there's disappointment, the stock negatively reacted, then, you know, uh, people started looking at, you know, what was positive going forward. And... While I think overall the IT rally is not the same steam that we had in Jan, Feb, March, uh, Hexaware on a standalone basis does have certain headwinds, positive headwinds for itself. And it could probably come back to that 500 plus uh, easily, you know, 530 uh, zones. So he could probably book out there. It's been a good two and a half years. Uh, he's made his money. And if he wants to focus on IT, he'll probably get into a Tata LXI or something, which, which I think is, is absolutely in a very sound, firm footing uh, as compared to some of the other mid-cap IT plays. Okay, uh, we got one more question. Uh, this is Saurabh M, who's writing in from Gujarat, and he's got a question on Symphony. Uh, he's been holding 50 shares of uh, Symphony. Uh, he says his cost is 2,602 rupees a share. Uh, but I think the all-time high is a little over 2,200. I don't uh, think it's gone to 2,600. Maybe the uh, figure is a little off, but 
uh, pretty high cost nevertheless. Uh, he's been holding it for the last three years and wants to know if he should hold or sell. Uh, hold or uh, sell, what would you tell him, uh, Prakash? So, you know, let's let's look at what's gone uh, wrong with Symphony or what's not moving right. First is that they started venturing into other segments beyond their core comfort of air coolers. And there's a lot of capex that uh, they put behind that venture. And when you get into, you know, other businesses which are not your forte, then you start competing with more established players. So the competitive intensity has hit them quite hard. They've had to take a lot of price cuts, discounts, which they never traditionally did. So the company has lost a little bit of that mojo in terms of, you know, being the supreme leader in, in, in air coolers. And we keep on attributing this to the weather cycle and all that, but I don't think that makes a big material difference. I mean, it's one week, quarter, but it compensates in the next one. And, and, and Symphony is probably, you know, trying to spread itself a bit too thin in terms of its expansion, and that's where, you know, this impact is. So if 2600 or whatever number he is, is right, his purchase price, I think uh, he, he needs to be worried because he's waited too long to book a loss. Mm. But uh, he could probably move out, get into a Voltas, which has got many vo more verticals to back it up with. You know, I mean, it's got engineering, it's got uh, AC units, it's got coolers now, you know, it's got water coolers. So, you know, you need to have a little bit of a more holistic view on the market and then not uh, uh, just be focused on one player, when especially things are worsening rapidly. Okay. Uh, well, uh, let me just get Ashwini in, not really on this question from this Mr. Saurabh, but uh, uh, I mean, since I think the price is off, generally, uh, would you say since the uh, stock has seen such a uh, big fall and it has been a market darling in yester years, this is a time to buy at all? Should people buy, Ashwini? See, all of these consumer stocks have had large rallies, if you see, over the past three years. I mean, Symphony used to be a 100 rupee stock. So this is that big correction that hits, uh, you know, stocks. I would think it can easily fall to 850 to uh, 900. Don't try to catch any of these uh, falling knives. Okay. All right. Uh, well, time for a quick break now, but stay tuned. Our experts will continue to answer all your stock questions. We're back very quickly. Welcome back. Uh, you're still with us here on Markets Today Talk Pack. Ashwini and Prakash are with us. They've been answering your questions. Uh, we got through three of the top five uh, stories which we put out every day. Here's the fourth one. Uh, the NTPC stock took a hit in the markets today. It was down 4%. This comes on the back of reports that the government may sell its 73% stake in NHPC to NTPC. Sources also add that the talks are at an initial stage and a deal is unlikely to be concluded this financial year. Anisha dives in with more details. Anisha, over to you. Well, yesterday we broke the news that NTPC might be looking to pick up government stake in NHPC and that's the reason those stocks were active in trade today. Brokerages also took cognizance of the fact and they have written on the same. JP Morgan, for example, believes that there are limited synergies when it comes to the business of NTPC and NHPC. Uh, they say that the execution risks are higher when it comes to NHPC and the hydro business versus that of NTPC and also the fact that the consolidated uh, holding company might see a discount because of the holding company structure. On the flip side, however, the positive is that NTPC might be able to reach their green energy level of around 13%. Also, the fact that the balance sheet of uh, NTPC is healthy enough to do a leverage buyout opens up the opportunity expand, to expand the ROE of the company. In fact, JP Morgan believes that the EPS of NTPC can grow as much as 7.5% if this deal does go through. But do remember that this deal is at a very early stage and it will not fructify in FI19 is what the expectation is. And that's the reason JP Morgan believes that this can be an overhang in the near term. Net net, we'll have to see how this deal works out to see how it goes for both the companies. Back to you. Okay. Thanks a lot for all those details on NTPC. Uh, Prakash Gupta has written to us from Udaipur. He has a question on NHPC. Okay. Uh, the one that NTPC may be buying. He's been holding 4,500 shares at 30 rupees a piece for the last five years. Wants to know if he should hold or sell. Prakash. Yeah, I think if. So, so very clearly, uh, he'll have to hold it beyond March of 2019 because it's not happening in this financial no, year for sure. And then it depends on which uh, form of government uh, and which state we are in. So there's a lot of uh, so just by the basis of the, on the basis of this particular development, I don't think it uh, becomes a decision. But NHPC has tired people out as has uh, been so fatiguing in terms of holding. 
because okay. the business is such it was supposed to be an annuity but it was overpriced when it was sold and then that's why you know and there were some multiple issuances which have diluted so i don't see any merit on holding on to this stock unless you have some dedication to being of national service and you know <laughs> and saying okay i have a you know, <coughs> nationally owned company on my portfolio but there are many more uh, businesses uh, related to wind turbines and, and water turbines and all which you could benefit out of if you if you believe in the sector so i think you yeah, should make a choice and there's multiple choices flying around now these days uh, nspc is not one of them so you should uh, even if he loses out 20% of his initial investment i think it, it's still better to switch out yep okay and now for the fifth headline and uh, the last headline for the day both lnt and jsw steel delivered their first quarter earnings uh, jsw beat expectations on almost all parameters profit and revenues were above estimates margin stood at 24% uh, in fact a little above what expectations were uh, infra major lnt also reported uh, a good first quarter top line beat street estimates operational pressure was a concern in the infrastructure business those margins remained under pressure anisha is here uh, with more on lnt anisha Well, the big positive for LNG was the top line growth that came in at 18% versus an expectation of 10%, telling you that execution has really picked up pace. Even if you look at the consolidated margin figure, a margin expansion of close to 150 basis point because the margins expanded and came over 10% level. This is again ahead of our expectations. Even if you look at the bottom line, 1,200 crore figure versus an expectation of around 1,100 crores. Yes, the range was wide, right from 900 crores to 1,400 odd crores. Nonetheless. Yes, this number should be taken well by the street. Now, in terms of the segments, yes, infrastructure segment has dampened sentiments a tad bit because the margins they depleted by 120, 130 basis point. But the management does clarify that they have made some provisions regarding some credit losses, and there have been some changes with respect to the AS, with respect to the realty companies, and that's the reason we are seeing a bit of margin dip when it comes to the infrastructure segment. Other than that, hydrocarbon has, you know. performed really well for the company that one has gone up considerably at the rate of around 30% for the quarter and even if you look at the order inflows up around 37% bang in line with our expectations so overall a good set of numbers coming in from LNT beat on most parameters just need to watch out for that infrastructure margin because that is one thing that the street watches out for back to you Okay, Anisha, thank you very much uh, for that. Giri Shintre has written to us from Mumbai. He's got a question on LNT. He's been holding 783 sh uh, shares. Cost is 1,511 rupees a piece, uh, and he's been holding the st stock for the last two years. Looks like the price is uh, adjusted for corporate action. Uh, his question is: uh, Should he be holding or selling? What should he do? Uh, Prakash, after looking at the results, what would no, your advice be? No, it's an absolute. Uh, actually, it's an ad. But if he the uh, mm -hmm. choice is between hold or sell, it is a hold. Hold. Well, I think it's very close to uh, you know getting realizing his uh, uh, cost. That's not the idea of investing. The idea of investing is at least you compound it at 15-20 percent uh, CAGR, which could happen with LNT. Uh, it's the only Nifty stock that deserves to get. upwardly re-rated but hasn't you know so between itc and lnt i think uh, uh, i would you know it's not a table thumping performance of sorts but there's no disappointment at all so i definitely feel it's a hold just be more patient you could add if he has the gumption to do that okay thank you very much prakash and ashwini for joining us with all your answers and with that we have to wrap up this edition of markets today talk back thank you very much for watching